When you begin diving into personal papers, family records, old documents, and original manuscripts in archives worldwide, you're no longer a beginning genealogist. The gateway into this underutilized collection is the free website, Archive Grid. Archive Grid is a free online database of archival collections from over 1,000 libraries, museums, and archives worldwide. It provides access to primary source materials, including letters, diaries, photographs, and more that can help you trace your family history. Think of Archive Grid as a finding aid to offline records that may contain essential genealogical clues to deepen your understanding of your ancestors or help you bust that persistent genealogy brick wall. If you strike it lucky, you can find an entire collection pertaining to your ancestor, such as this one from Robert Kerr in the University of British Columbia archives. Or you might find a letter written by your ancestor to a colleague within their collection, such as this one written by Robert Victor Zemstein to Raymond Thayer Burge in a Californian archive. Start by going to the Archive Grid website. The address is a little weird, so I'll make sure I'll leave it in the description box. In the search bar, type in your ancestor's name, along with any relevant keywords, such as a place they lived, their occupation, or any notable events in their life. This is a great time to do surname-only research for uncommon last names. Once you've entered your search terms, hit the search button. I type the surname Zemstein in the search box. Notice it's S-T-I-E-N at the end. Sadly, Archive Grid returned no search results. Thus, I need to try spelling variations. I could try any of the Zemstein variations you see on the screen. When I used this surname variation, Archive Grid found 18 possibilities. When a successful search happens, Archive Grid will display a list of results matching your search term. Each result will briefly describe the collection and information on the institution that holds it. Click the green button that says view the finding aid of any results to view more details about the collection including the scope and the content of materials and information on how to access the collection. The finding aids are particularly helpful when the collection title doesn't seem evident that the possible item is worth investigating. The William Francis Gray Swan Papers from 1900 to 1961 doesn't initially seem promising, but the description indicates that he was a physicist. My great-grandfather was a physics professor, so I think I know where this collection will lead. I'll click on the view finding aid and come to this collection. The archive grid entry links to the American Philosophical Society entry for the Swan Papers. An assisted search, which would be control F or command F, I'll type in the beginning of Zemstein and notice I've come to this paper that says Zemstein, RV in 1927. This was likely a letter received by Mr. Swan from my grandfather. Some collections may be available online, while others may require you to visit the institution in person or submit a lookup and copy request. If the collection is available online, you may be able to view it directly from Archive Grid, or you may be directed to the institution's website to access it. If the collection is only available in person, be sure to note the location and hours of the institution and any specific instructions for accessing the materials. Perhaps you have an ancestor with a more common surname, I searched for an Emory Barris, hoping to find a man who joined the LDS Church before the pioneers moved west. I discovered entries for his likely grandson, Emory F. Barris, including a mission diary and correspondence. Another entry related to biographical sketches is in the Mrs. Paul Barris collection. That Emory is the Barris I'm looking for. Now I can contact the Utah State Historical Society to consult about obtaining a copy of this biographical sketch. Archive Grid has a few 
ways to help you narrow down your searches. Two of the easiest to utilize are to put quotes around phrases you want to find exactly in order, such as Luther Titus or flip it around Titus Luther. You can also use not to exclude entries such as Emery Barris, not Vinoy. To view additional filters, check out this helpful guide that I will link in the description box. Another way to filter results involves the summary view. Click on summary below the search results. For the Zumstein surname, I can filter the topic to physics or filter the location to Ohio, Cincinnati. Not every item in an archive is categorized by a person's name, and not everything you need to know in genealogy research relates to a specific person. Thus, do location research on Archive Grid to find information about where your ancestors lived. I'm trying to learn more about Sabanoso, New Mexico. I can key in Sabanoso, New Mexico and one entry appears. This one is intriguing. What was a place for people to live in the early 1900s is now a federal wilderness area. I'd be interested in learning about the archaeological reports of Savinosa because it might have clues as to people who lived there recently and anciently. Don't limit your research to a specific town or village. Expand your investigation to the county or state level. When expanding to San Miguel County records, I can review over 1,000 possibilities. The Pecos Pueblos Grant and the Maxwell Land Grant Company have caught my eye. Be more methodical in your search by looking for a place and a record type, like Essex County, New Jersey tax. And you'll find an entry for Essex County, New Jersey Tax Office Account Book, which sounds really interesting. And I can obtain that from the New Jersey Historical Society. I also tried Farm Account, Elizabethtown, New Jersey. There are several great account books, but I also noticed the Presbyterian Church records from the New Jersey Historical Society. I'm very interested in this collection for church records in Elizabethtown. Now I just need to either plan a trip to New Jersey or figure out how I can obtain a lookup. Recognize while we search for a location in the catalog that collections might not end up in the same place our ancestors lived. For instance, perhaps an account book from Vermont ends up in the New York Public Library or the Texas A&M University Special Collections. At some point, you might need to conduct research for places for you to donate your research rather than find research in archives. Archive Grid can help you discover unfamiliar repositories that might accept your collection. Remember, this collection can contain just about anything from documents to books, correspondence, artifacts, and photos. So start with the map tool. Click and hold your cursor on the map to move it around. You can also use the plus or the minus sign to zoom in or out. But you can also type in a location. So let's say Santa Fe, New Mexico. Click on one of the location icons and notice what it shows you. The New Mexico History Museum, the Museum of New Mexico, the New Mexico State Library, and the Institute of American Indian Arts. Well, if that doesn't seem like it would suffice, well, let's zoom out a little bit. And notice there's something in Las Vegas, New Mexico, which is the Highlands University Donnelly Collection, or there are some over here in Albuquerque. And I'm just moving around the map, zooming in, the National Hispanic Cultural Center. Now for those with Hispanic heritage who happen to be new, from New Mexico or anywhere around the country, this could be of use to you. 
Once you find one that seems interesting, click on search the collection to get a rough idea of what might be in the collection or go back and obtain the contact information, which would probably be the website, and then explore their websites, their exhibitions, as well as learn more about these different archives, and then maybe seek out contact information to see if they will accept your donations. And that's it. With Archive Grid, you can access a wealth of primary source materials that can help you trace your family history. Remember to use specific search terms and take note of any information about the institutions that hold the collections you're interested in. Good luck with your research and thanks for watching. To learn more tips and tricks that pro genealogists use to find their family history research, check out this video right here.